Has there ever been a time where you wondered about something and thought to yourself, wow, I really should know this? Whether it be something as serious as the water shortage our world is facing or the future of digital real estate. Or maybe something as strange as the origins of the Mandela effect or what does Michelin have to do with food or if lizard people actually exist. Whatever it may be, we got you covered. But that's not all. We turn it into one big drinking game. Welcome to Shots and Thoughts, the internet's only educational improv comedy game show involving shots of liquor and D20s. We're learning what you should already know so you don't have to. We are. We are. We are cultivate. 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 We are cultivate. Hello and welcome to Yield Crime, where we discuss the funny, strange, and obscure crimes of yesteryear. I'm your host, Lindsay Valenti, and with me is my sister and co-host, Maddie Stangle. Hello. Hi. I'm reporting to you live from my Jeep again. Yes. Yes, she is. I am. Mm-hmm. But I come bearing better audio equipment. Yes, you do. So... It doesn't sound like you're recording in a Jeep. It doesn't sound like I'm recording in a Jeep in my garage in my house. There are loud noises inside yeah. the house. The things we do. The things we do. Well, like I was telling Maddie before we started recording, this week's episode is going to be a little bit shorter. When I first found out about it, I was like, oh, this is going to be super cool. And then I realized there is next to nothing about it out there in the world, which is fine. I still was able to expand on it. Expand enough that you wanted to share it still. Yes. Got it. So this week, we will be discussing Lou Pangali. That's a cool name. Are they they cool or are they not cool? He's really not cool. Oh, shit. (laughs) God damn it. That's why he has a cool name. Mm-hmm. It's the only thing cool about him. Lures you in thinking he's cool, and then you're like, God damn it. Uh, Lou lures you in. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> he's terrible. <laughs> he's trash. <laughs> he is the worst. Great. Can't wait to hear about this guy. Yeah. All right. Information was pulled from the following sources. A 2021 The Lineup article by Oren Gray. 2021 Medium article by Alexa Boxak, 2019 The Historian's Hut article, 2017 Listverse article by Lee Drake, The World Encyclopedia of Serial Killers, Volume 2, E through L by Susan Hall. Uh oh, spoiler. <laughs> spoiler alert, and three Wikipedia links. All right. And links to all of these articles will be included in the show notes. If you want a playlist of all our episodes on YouTube, click the link in our show notes or in our link tree and subscribe today for not only a list of our full catalog, but a separate list as well, just of our Can You Crack the Cramp Word segments. So Lou murders. Lou equals murder. Yes. At least three. At least three. At least to be on that Wikipedia page. Yes. To be in the world's encyclopedia Of people who kill more than three. Dang. That's gross. Yeah. As we've seen quite a few times in our podcast, there are several recorded quote-unquote first serial killers, and given how history works, it's not always easy to know when or if the allegations are even true. Mm -hmm. Refer back to our episode on Elizabeth Battery, for example. Uh, You know, the famous Blood Countess. Was she really that evil, or did she just have really powerful political enemies? You be the judge. Or was she just a jerk that somebody with enough money hated yeah. to ruin? Mm-hmm. She was a woman. That's true. A woman with property. Mm-hmm. Heaven forbid. Mm-hmm. However, in the case of this week's topic, the allegations might actually be true, according to accounts in Records of the Grand Historian by Sima Quian and Sima Tan. So okay. it's a father and son, I think, that wrote it. Okay. 
Lou Pangali was born in the second century. Oh, dang. Yeah. Okay. As Prince of Zhidong in the Western Han Dynasty. The Han Imperial Dynasty of China had two periods. The Western Dynasty, which lasted from roughly 202 BC to 9 CE, so that's Common Era. Mm-hmm. And the Eastern Dynasty, which lasted between 22 to 220 CE. Okay. The only difference between the two, other than the years in which they reigned, are that the capital cities changed locations during those times. Okay. I suppose that makes sense. Mm Mm-hmm. Lu Pangali and his family ruled during the first period, which came right after the end of the Xin Dynasty, during which the warring factions of China were united, whether that's something they wanted or not. Great. Great Mm -hmm. start. Great start. The Han Dynasty was a period of national pride and cultural growth, which led to the Chinese people flourishing. So bad start in the Xin Dynasty, making things a little bit better in the Han Dynasty. Yeah. Moving on up. The Western Empire held a wealth of gifts, the opening of the Silk Road, the construction of sections of the Great Wall, the start of real interest in academics and science. Okay. All right. So growing culturally and monetarily with Mm -hmm. trade building a wall the greatest one the greatest of the walls yeah they're like you know what we can't just build any wall we're gonna make it great we need to make a great wall you know just a really great one Lu Pangali was the third of five sons born to Lu Wu of Lian who was also known as King Shao in addition to being the grandson of Emperor Wen, who ruled from 180 to 157 BC, and he was also the nephew of Emperor Xing, who ruled from 157 to 141 BC. I'm sorry, first red flag is he's the middle child. Yeah, he's right smack dab in the middle. He goes undetected. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, gets away with a lot. Flies under the radar, yep. Yep. His father had a bit of a dark past as well, considering he had the royal minister assassinated. Cute. Mm -hmm. I don't like you. Go die. I'm going to hire someone to make you go die. Yep. (laughs) Yep. Minister that guy. Minister of dying? (laughs) What? Minister of being dead? I thought I was the minister of defense. No. Nope. Minister of Defense Liz, she's dead. <laughs> great episode uh, so far. <laughs> we're doing great. Gold. Solid gold. King Shao, who was the younger brother of the future Emperor Xing, ruled over one of the most powerful kingdoms in the empire and was a contender to be next in line for the imperial throne before Emperor Xing nominated his son as his successor, not his younger Ooh, brother. That's... That never works. We've seen Game of Thrones. Yeah. We know how this ends. And you know, all of the European monarchy. <laughs> Just, yeah, any monarchy, I yeah. think, in general. Yeah. They're like, you know what? I just had a kid. I love him more. Yeah. He's going to have my things. And then they're like, okay, got to kill your kid. Way yep. to go. Did you really love him? Did you really? Because now I got to murder him. Yep. Cue the song of fire and ice. <laughs> like, really? Because I have dragons. <laughs> Do you have dragons? <laughs> Not anymore. They're mine. They're mine now. Lu Pangali never really got to know his father, who was a major patron of the arts and literature. His father was banished before he died in 144 BC. Mm-hmm. As the emperor's son, his death and banishment devastated his mother the Empress Dowager Xiao Wen. To appease her, Emperor Wen had the territory of Yuan divided up for each of Lu Wu's five sons. So it was okay. in order of eldest to youngest, Lu Mai, Lu Ming, Lu Pangali, Lu Ding, and Lu Bushi. Okay. Growing up, Lu Pangali was known to be incredibly cruel and arrogant. Great. Some of our favorite qualities in young princes. Yes. Especially ones that, you know, manage others mm-hmm. in a kingdom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
The kingdom had a set of rules of decorum on how a member of the royal family was to interact with their subjects. Lu Pangali viewed them more as guidelines and ones that he often chose to ignore. So just like a suggestion Mm -hmm. in a suggestion box that he never opened. Yes. Got it. It was collecting dust over in the corner, and he just kind of had it there for funsies. He was like, oh, you you actually put something in there? Yeah. I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> what box? I don't see a box. But thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Lu Pangali was crowned king of Zhidong in 144 BC. During his rule, it was common for him to go on marauding expeditions, accompanied by 20 to 30 of his devoted followers. These expeditions would include raiding homes, brutally murdering people, and seizing their possessions. Great. So like a reverse Robin Hood. Mm-hmm. Cool. And he did this for sport. Sounds like it. Sounds like, you know, again, Game of Thrones. When they would, like, go on little hunting excursions, if, like, a baby was about to be born. They're like, hey, instead of welcoming ch children, let's get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Cute. It's believed that prior to him being crowned king, he either had a spotless record or was very good at covering his tracks. I'm going to lean t more towards the latter one. Yeah. Yep. Coming so from too. a powerful family. Following his coronation, he began to surround himself with people who had, shall we say, less than savory motives. Great. Great. And this wasn't just something that happened a handful of times. These raiding parties went on for, wait for it, 29 years. Great. How often would he have these parties? I don't know. But he had them enough during those 29 years that the people of his kingdom were terrified to leave their homes and would barricade themselves inside each night. Great. Just what you want. Yeah. So he's doing this to the own, his own people in his kingdom. Yeah. Like not a rival no. kingdom. No. Like not, a, not one of his brother's kingdoms. He's doing it to yeah. his own people. Great. Mm -hmm. He's like the kid with the magnifying glass on an ant farm. Yes. And the sun. Yes. Great. Emperor Xing, the reigning monarch and Lu Pangali's uncle, was unaware of his murderous exploits until one day in 116 or 115 BC, the son of one of his many victims sent a message about the activities the king of Zhidong had been taking part in. Did he really not know? Did he really not know? Like at all? I have no idea. No inkling? If he's got like a, a gaggle of dudes just like murdering with him for fun, anywhere from like one event a year to like one event a month. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe on Wednesdays. I don't know. Yeah. Or marauding Mondays or whatever it was. Yeah. The full moon. Needless to say, the emperor was horrified. Yeah, I bet. By the time Lu Pangali's murderous outings were finally stopped, it's believed that he had murdered over 100 people. That's actually less than I thought it was going to be for 29 years. Yeah. I mean, it's still over three. Yeah, it's a, it's a few over three. Mm -hmm. Just a handful. The court demanded Lu Pangali's execution, but Emperor Xing could not kill his nephew. Instead, Lu Pangali was stripped of his title and status, made a commoner, and banished to the country of Shangyang, which today is Zushan in the Hayube province. I think he should have been released to his own people. Yeah. You don't want to kill him? Let them kill him. That's true. You know? Unfortunately, that's where the story ends. I doubt that the emperor stayed his execution out of any sort of familial love. Mm -hmm. More likely it was to ensure that Lu Pangali's brothers didn't band together to retaliate against their uncle. It's also oh. theorized that Lu Pangali was executed discreetly upon his arrival to Shenyang. Probably. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Because he wouldn't have been, he would have been just as much of a threat anywhere he would have gone. Mm -hmm. Especially after being, you know, spurned like that. Yeah. 
There is also the theory that Lu Pangali was, in fact, framed. Emperor Wu and his father before him, Emperor Wen, had been dividing up the ancient feudal kingdoms of China in an effort to weaken them, much like Emperor Xing did when he divided the kingdom of Liyan into five pieces for all of King Shao's sons. Mm -hmm. Following King Zhidong's banishment, his kingdom was dissolved and the land was once more brought under the jurisdiction of Emperor Wu. And at the end of the day, we really can't know the full real story of Lu Pangali, yeah. considering this happened over 2,000 years ago. But if it is true, it would make him one of the first serial killers in known history. And the thing people need to realize about this story is the whole story of this event happening is a paragraph in this book about the Grand Historian. What I've been able to extrapolate was based off of one paragraph, like basically a footnote Dang. about him. Dang. Good job. Thanks. Nice forensicking. Thanks. Yeah, this is probably the shortest episode that I've ever written, but it was still like interesting enough where I was like, I kind of want to talk about this guy. Yeah. I mean, could it have been a political thing? Yeah. But at the same time, I think that that's feasible. Like, especially if you think of uh, family in power mm -hmm. with sons unchecked, essentially, mm -hmm. with land that nobody's supervising. Yeah. Well, and it could be something, too, where maybe, like, all the gossip, it was all gossip, and then when he was banished, the emperor is like, oh, I'm saving you guys. Look at how, mm -hmm. look at how great of an emperor I am. I'm saving you yeah. guys, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know anything about yeah. Chinese politics or Chinese dynasties. Especially 2,000 years ago. Yeah. So hopefully no one who's a great ex-descendant of these people is going to come after me and be like, actually. <laughs> It'd be fun. It'd be actually pretty great if they could tell you. Yeah. If there was some I mean, hidden like, text somewhere. Listen, the familial rumor mill from 2,000 years ago is <laughs> this. My great, 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 great. <laughs> Great, 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 great. <laughs> Cousin Jeff. <laughs> Knew him. You know, of the house of Jeff. <laughs> Met him at a party. <laughs> he tried to kill him. It was a thing. It was a thing. And he was, was like, thing. dude, bro. He survived and he was like, you gotta fix this kingdom, man. I'm gonna send the carrier pigeon to the wall. And the instruct out. the pigeon to fly over said wall and not yeah. into said wall because right. it won't get very far if it does that. It actually, that was the reason why he kept murdering is there were many failed pigeon attempts because <laughs> they didn't realize that there was a wall being constructed <laughs> and it inhibited their current path that they had done for the last hundred years. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. weren't prepared. It's prepared. like when a new freeway opens in like deer territory and they have no oh idea God. that there's a freeway there now. Yeah. It's a slaughter. Yeah. Looking for more content? You can find us online at yieldcrimepodcast.com. If you'd like to see pictures from this week's episode, not to mention bonus content and funny memes, make sure to follow us on Twitter at yieldcrimepod and on Facebook and Instagram at yieldcrimepodcast. On TikTok, of course you are. Follow us at Yield Crime Podcast. Women have accomplished so much in the world, but we never hear enough about them. Well, we'd like to change that. Welcome to the Riveting Rosies podcast with Carissa Decker and Elise Cantu, where we'll be sharing the incredible stories of amazing women and how they've changed the world. Our goal is to leave you feeling inspired and empowered by the great women who have come before us. While most of the stories we will be sharing with you focus on the positive and wonderful things women have done, we will occasionally tell the tale of a woman who decided not to use her powers for good. We've come so far, but there's still progress to be made. So roll up those sleeves and let's get to work. Because everything's coming up rose these.
This week's podcast plug is the Riveting Rosies podcast from the Asa Network. Carissa Decker and her sister Elise Cantu host the Riveting mm-hmm. Rosies podcast. Their goal is to share the stories of badass women you may not have previously heard of, reminding us that amazing women have always done incredible things and always will. Nice. And you can join them in their fight against the patriarchy by clicking the link in our show notes. Do it. And this week's listener question comes from our listener, Kellyanne. Hi, Kellyanne. She would like to know, would you rather have visual hallucinations of the Rain Girl or Freddy Krueger from A Nightmare on Elm Street? The Rain Girl. I agree. I'd rather see Samara than have Freddy Krueger come and like just surprising me out of the blue. Yeah, because I can I can dissociate her out of my vision easily, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, do I see that girl, or is that just a shadow next to a wall? Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm, I'm gonna say a shadow next to a wall. I don't want it to be a girl. Yeah, I'm just gonna say yeah. it's a random tree that's in my house. Right. <laughs> yeah, like wow, there's a really it's a weird black and white tree in my house. When did I buy that palm? I don't know, but it's just going to sit over there in the corner of my vision. It's fine. Has that has that corner always been wet? Is that well water? Do I smell moldy water? What is Why does this? It smells so mildewy in here. Why is it damp? It's so damp in my house now. Well, at least we don't need a humidifier, I guess. You just, you just keep getting those like damp rid things. You, you just put it next to the hallucination. Like, sorry, you just you just smell. I'm just going to put this here. Hopefully it'll absorb your odor. I have like a mind, little right? like kitty pool in like one corner. I'm like, you can stand in here. So then when you're leaking water everywhere, you know, it's not damaging the wood floors or ruining the carpet. Do you think she'd still have power if there's, if there's no like VHS or DVR or like Blu-ray? I don't know. Yeah. What would she crawl out of? People don't have tube TVs anymore. They don't. They don't. Or they're using them as like... Fish bowls? Yeah. Could you imagine? She's just like super surprised. She's like, why is there a puffer foot fish? I'm supposed to be murdering you. Yeah. Why am I surrounded by tiny little guppies like, right now? I am she's just furious. Underworked. Feeling not appreciated. She's like, I haven't cursed anyone in so long. No one watches VHS tapes anymore. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> When's the new generation gonna gonna realize the vintage VHS tapes again? Mm-hmm. So I can murder. And understand the true beauty of rewinding. Yeah. No one rewinds anymore. Because you're not kind. They're not kind. <laughs> they're not kind. Don't, Everyone's awful. Don't rewind. All right. What's something good you'd like to share? I got to bake for our little eastery bunch Mm -hmm. and i it's something good but it's something very frustrating because Mm -hmm. per your request i made some macarons Mm -hmm. and if people don't if people haven't made them before like a french macaron is difficult to execute unless you have like a recipe that you're super sure of and for whatever reason when I was trying to make them yesterday, they were just not working. Like the egg whites weren't creating the peak that it needed to, or I had like over whisked mm-hmm. at some point. And then there was another batch where the it was too wet. And so the batter, like it didn't get feet before I put it in. And I was so mad <laughs> and I kept trying to figure it out. And so finally I just did, I did the recipe of one and I did the baking instructions of another one. And I finally got them to be like cookies, but they still weren't quite where I wanted them to be. But in the interim of this, I have thought of a Frankenstein macaron that I really want to make Mm -hmm. that I will not disclose until I try it and it succeeds. (laughs) Because if it fails... I'll be embarrassed. So, but it's it's going to be a fun food combo of a cookie that normally wouldn't exist. Nice. 
So we'll see. I'll stay tuned. I don't know if I'll do it this week, but I will be doing it soon because it's been in my brain and I now want to make it. So what about nice. you? What's something good this week? Something good this week. I went back to the gym. So nice. I've been doing these hit classes at an ungodly hey. hour in the morning with my book club friend on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Book club bud. My book club bud. Mm -hmm. And I had bought like a 10 class pass. And then I, I used the last of it last Thursday, I think, or the Thursday before. And so I was like, well, I'm just going to buy a gym membership because it's, you know, then I can guilt myself into going more because I'm paying for a gym membership. That's how it works. And right. everybody knows. As everyone knows. As everyone knows. And so I went and I did this thing on the treadmill that is supposedly really great at helping you lose weight. Have you heard of like the 12... 33 yep. thing yep yeah i did that but i ended up being like 12 32 and a half because i can't yeah. go three miles per hour yeah so for people well, that don't you know have, you have asthma that yeah is it induced harder by allergies and like everything's melting here so yeah there's a lot of snow mold and stuff going on <laughs> right now your ability to breathe is still very important so you going down a little bit that's cool you know People that don't know, the 1233 thing is where you have the treadmill set at a 12 degree incline and you go for 30 minutes at three miles per hour. And it's supposed mm -hmm. to do wonders for helping you lose weight. Full disclosure, I did it at two and a half miles per hour and I was mm -hmm. sweating buckets. Like I oh, was yeah. just I've dripping, just yeah. dripping everywhere. And I was like, I think a lot of it has to do with the incline. Yeah. I was like, this is hot. <laughs> I thought I was dying the whole time I was doing it, but at least, you know, it worked because I was right. physically upset afterwards. <laughs> My <laughs> body's just crying. <laughs> so I did that and I'm proud of myself and I'll at some point probably go back and do it again this week. Yeah. Make my body cry. Make it cry. You should like half the incline. On days you you don't feel like doing it, just so you still feel good about doing it with the incline. Because I think incline's kind of the hardest thing for me whenever mm -hmm. I do treadmill stuff. Because, like, nobody likes walking up hills. Yeah. So why would you want to, like, pretend you're walking up the world's slowest incline hill? Yeah. For, like, an hour. It's just a straight shot up. Especially when you do those things where, like, you know, some treadmills have, like, the trail. Oh, work. yeah. And then it's like you're going through this really nice forest or whatever, and you're still seemingly climbing up, and you're like, this sucks. <laughs> yeah, even the vi the video's, like, going down and right. stuff, and you're like, I'm not doing that. Like, I want to go down instead of up. Why is this happening? Why am I still going up? I'm supposed to be going right. down. <laughs> Your brain is just really upset. Mm-hmm. And then Samara shows up and you're like, God damn it. Like, no, it smells like mold. <laughs> Someone turn just, on the fan. <laughs> just because I chose the rainforest doesn't mean I wanted to smell the rainforest, okay? Yeah. <laughs> who who brought a VHS tape? Put <laughs> I it didn't even know these TVs were compatible with it. Put it back. Do you guys even know what that is? Put it back. Yeah. The time I went, it was mostly like high school boys that were there. And I was like, cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what up, bros? Yep. All right, shall we? We shall. If you're interested in ad-free content, consider supporting us with a one-time donation either over on Buy Me A Coffee or our Venmo page, both of which are in our link tree and in the show notes. If you'd like early ad-free content, not to mention some bonus material, become a member of our Patreon today for as low as a dollar a month. If you'd like to support the show, you can't do so financially, you can leave us a five-star rating and review wherever you listen to podcasts, mm -hmm. such as Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Good Pods, and I know there's a few others that do it. We're also, this is a great plug for me, we're also doing another giveaway the mm -hmm. throughout the rest of April, so we'll be, and also into May, we'll be doing a drawing at the end of May for everybody who submits a review, and everyone wins something. So nice. this is nice. a good incentive to submit a review for the show. Absolutely. And this week's comes from Apple Podcasts. 
from user Diana Mo. Hmm. Or Diana Mo. But it's got like oh. Diana in the front part of it. Nice. Anyway, it says, so funny. The jokes just keep coming. That's what I'm all about. Cramp words is always in the back of my mind now. When I hear a new term in a period show, I'm like, I wonder if they've done this one yet. Nice. Thank you. That's so cute. That is cute. Got something you want to say? Shoot us an email over at yieldcrimepodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear your story ideas, see any gifts you send our way, or if you just want to say hello. We're pretty friendly. Speaking of friendly, if you'd like to have real-time conversations with us, consider joining our Discord over at the Cultivate Network. You can chat with us over at the Old Crimers Cubby, or catch up with any of the other great creators that are part of the Cultivate family of podcasts. Just click the link in our show notes or over on our link tree to get started today. And on that note, as always, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Madison. And we'll see you next time with another tale as old as crime. <laughs>